everyone and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for June 3rd, 2013. Uh, call the meeting to order. Two, uh, first thing I want to say is that uh, towards the end of this meeting, we are going to, I'm going to make a motion that we go into executive session. That's not on the agenda. Uh, we received a letter from the Attorney General earlier today that we think deserves a timely response, in fact requires a timely response. We could not have reasonably anticipated it arriving, so it's not, that's why it's not on the agenda. Uh, Sorry? We always put it on. We, well, the specific yeah. reason for this oh, yes. executive session is not okay. on the agenda. But uh, anyway, so that will be at the end of the meeting. Um, also, before we start, there have been, um, it's been an exciting week in Arlington, not necessarily in a good way. Uh, uh, town Manager, will you tell us about tree poles and, f and fuel oil? Yes, absolutely. So I, I wanted to call to the board's attention two memos that I placed on the board's desk. First memo is from Chief Jefferson outlining the three events in the past week that you're referring to. First, a fire on uh, Webster Street last Wednesday, <clears throat> the tanker truck rollover at the rotary at Route 60 on Friday evening, uh, and then the toppling of several telephone poles on Mass Ave near the intersection of Grove Street uh, on Sunday afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> Arlington uh, Fire, police, and DPW uh, reported to uh, all of those scenes to help out while well, DPW didn't go to the fire scene. Uh, so um, a lot of great work by our staff. Uh, for three very difficult situations, um, all, all that happened at, at odd times uh, for people to be uh, reporting, especially DPW. Uh, I, I want to give some detail in regards to the, the fuel spill that was a result of uh, the tanker rollover. So that was a 10,000-gallon tanker truck that rolled over. Almost all of the 10,000 gallons exited the truck wow. uh, based on the, the holes that were punctured in the truck. Uh, but Chief Jefferson got an update from DEP as of 345 this afternoon. Uh, so I want to let the board know and anybody watching know that <clears throat> over 90% of the spill has been recovered as of this afternoon. About 7,200 gallons were recovered in liquid form through vacuuming the river. Approximately 1,000 gallons were recovered in absorbent pads and booms that were placed in the river. And approximately another 1,000 gallons were estimated to have been removed in the road surface. Uh, so they, they don't believe any oil made it past the booms that were set up at the River Street Bridge. Uh, and they're going to continue to work to clean up, and we're going to continue to monitor and work with DEP to see what uh, further cleanup efforts have been under, uh, are being undertaken. So I wanted to let the board and the public know of that progress. Thank you. Any questions? No, just I've been, I've been by there a couple times. It's very impressive what Clean Harbors has there in terms of equipment. <coughs> uh, three large, I assume there's some sort of generators or something, but then a couple of uh, tanker trucks that yeah. were pumping there. Thank you. Yeah, as always, our compliments to the, uh, the people who work for the town. Uh, you know, those, that, like you say, you have a, you know, an off-duty police officer who's assisting in, in a, with a fire and a fairly dramatic rescue. And then you have, uh, on a, you have the, the truck overturning and like, uh, helping up cleaning up the gas. And then you have, in the middle of what would otherwise be just a hot, sunny day, telephone poles falling over and you know, closing Mass Ave. And I, cert I know I speak for all of us, but everyone when we say thank you to everybody for the work that they do for us. And, and I do have comments, but I'm going to save it to when we get to the um, utility poll working group agenda yeah. item, because I think it's best <laughs> to mesh. Sounds good to me. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you. All right. That takes us to item one on the agenda, which is our consent agenda. We have the minutes of the meetings of May 13th and May 20th of this year. And we have for approval the Department of Housing and Community Development submission, uh, the Arlington 360, also known as the SIM site. Laura, did you want to talk to that for Yes, good evening. Um, I'm here to talk to you about the affordable housing at SIMS, particularly because the town and the developer are getting ready to submit materials related to the affordable housing to uh, the State Department of Housing and Community Development, which is the keeper of the list of affordable housing in the state. Um, which counts towards your 40B um, inventory. 
So uh, as a result of the town's inclusionary zoning, 15% of the units at Sims will be affordable to households at or below 80% of median income. That's 26 units. Um, also, because we negotiated a sale with, um, with the property, we, the town bought the property and then negotiated a sale, we have an additional 5% of the units for middle income families, which we define as 80 to 120% of median. Um, those units will not go onto the affordable housing inventory and therefore DHCD doesn't care at all about those units. So this application is just about the low and moderate income. Um, we need to submit our, all of our paperwork. They're very concerned about the um, affirmative marketing of the units, the tenant selection plan, and the affordable housing restriction. The units uh, will be affordable in perpetuity. So they will forever be affordable, whether they convert to condo or stay as rental. So the, uh, the schedule is that we'll be marketing the units in the summer, the lottery for tenant selection will take place in the fall. Occupancy will begin in the fall, probably will roll out through the winter, maybe even into the spring. Um, and so uh, well, we'll be choosing the tenants. I, I'm going to guess around September, give or take a month. Um, so I'm here to answer any questions you might have about the affordable housing. Uh, we'll be, we'll be um, publicizing it in the Advocate. It'll be all over the town website. Um, I have a list of people who've contacted me in the past asking about it, and I'll be sending them um, notice. And then many local organizations, churches, schools will be um, notified. And we'll particularly want to tell town employees, teachers, police, fire um, about the opportunity. Uh, just a couple of questions. First, thanks for getting us this information. I know I get this and my colleagues question just about weekly, especially really? from town employees. So my first question to you is, I should, this is draft right now. I should not distribute it. I can give the information out by the phone, but the official applications and the like, wait till you send the board the final document. Um, or are you can talking I about the, the rents and the, the, the yes. rents and the income limits are real? Okay, so what's what we what is missing from this? This is a, a sample ad. Okay, is the dates? We don't know when we're going to start marketing. We need DHCD to approve the everything before we can start marketing. So, if someone asks for a copy of this now, can I give it to them, or should I wait? I'm, that's what I'm asking. I, I guess you should wait. Okay, so you'll let us know. Right, I'll, I'll, I can tell people verbally, but yes, yeah. and also you can have them call me at my office, and I'll, I'll and I'm, then, I'm already telling people about the rents and the income. All right, limits. and then the second question I had. And I'm sorry, I wasn't quite paying attention as much as I should have because I might have misheard you. Um, I know we've had conversation with previous board about um, some people think we're at the 1.5 percent figure that we need to be at. There was discussion that um, John Belskis and I, me, <coughs> Ms. Weiner, um, the other Adam GIS, and I remember the discussion being, you know, we're almost there, we're close but there was pretty much agreement when Sims came online that that would get us to that number. Did I mishear you that you said we're not submitting the 26 units to be counted that way? Oh, no, no. The 26 units will be counted. Sims is already counted, and we are really very, very close, but we are still shy of the 1.5%. I'm just hearing this for the, the past five the years. Ones, <laughs> the ones that won't be counted were the ones that are middle income. Oh, right, yeah. right. Yeah, I'll add all the calculations that we talked about maybe six months or even longer ago uh, back included Sims and Brigham's as part of that affordable unit calculation. Mm -hmm. So I think it's 0.02% short at this point. It's just an acre or so. It's very small. It is a very limited. I know. Notice, it, just my frustration for five years I've been here and it's very small. We're almost there. It's very small. Another big project comes online. It's, it's still very small. So, so what's the figure right now? Point. I think it's 1.48 we're at. Yeah. Did, oh, sorry. Okay, did that you. calculation include uh, Capital Square? Yes. It did. Yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and just so the, where the board is clear, the, or at least the way I understand this, and we should clarify, is so by putting this on the consent agenda, there's some, there, in the packet there's something there to be signed by the chair, and it's in, Marie has it waiting for me. Yes. And then we're going to send it to the state. So the consent agenda is that we're agreeing to, the, to we're, we're endorsing my signature on this document to send it to the state. Okay. I just have a question. Um, is, uh, do we properly vote this under the consent agenda, or is this a separate It's a vote? separate item. We should take two separate, I think. Oh, do you want to do it Yeah, just because it's listed that way in that. Actually, do, that is one. Yeah. Well, I guess who's um, not, <laughs> guess who wasn't paying attention to his agenda closely enough. 
I apologize, everyone. Bad chairman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, so um, just so everyone else can follow along, I had I just inadvertently merged items one and two together, and really we should be uh, <coughs> voting them separately. And because for some reason I thought that this was under the consent agenda, so I apologize. So we ha we haven't taken a vote on the consent agenda, and we haven't taken a vote on the item number two, which is what Laura is talking to us about. I apologize to everyone for the. Consent. Sorry, I was trying to say that delicately. It's, so. yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the last mistake I'll make. I'm sure of that. Uh, any other? Uh, we might, let's continue the conversation. Any other questions for Laura? Or questions about that? So, does anyone want to make a motion on either one or two? <laughs> I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. All right. Uh, any discussion on the consent agenda? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Do I have a motion on number two, talking about uh, the Department of Housing and Community Development submission? So move receipt. Actually, it's more than receipt in this case. I think Commission. to We're authorize right. the chairman to sign. So yes. moved. Second. Second. All right. Uh, moved and seconded. All the, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Great. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Excellent. All right, everyone, for being that a little more confusing than needed to be. Next up is item number three, if I can count to three today. And it is appointment to the Human Rights Commission. Mel Goldsby. Well, I'm sorry, could you say, come on up to the mic? I, I apologize. Say, say it again for me. Goldsight. Thank you very much. Good. Welcome. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, okay. I have lived in Arlington since July of 99. Um, I moved here so my husband could go to MIT. He <laughs> now works at MathWorks. Um, it's good school to go to, you know. Oh, oh awesome. Yeah, <laughs> You're wearing your brass rat. Uh -huh. um, I worked at MIT Press for 12 years, uh, and then I um, resigned my position to help with caregiving for my grandmother, and now I work about half time for the Massachusetts Transgender Political Coalition, and I thought that would align pretty well with the Human Rights Commission and that I would have something to offer for that. Questions from the board? So we moved in. Uh, um, Diane? Um, move approval. Thank you for Second. volunteering and bringing your expertise. You certainly will complement our current Human, so human Rights Commission. Um, I want to know, do you or your husband know the actual MIT school song? I do I only not. do. I only say that because uh, Chairman is a graduate of MIT. Are you going to make Every it now and then. Are you to sing it? Are you going to sing it now? How about the cheer? <laughs> OK. Uh, um, E to the U, D U, D X, E to the X, D X, cosine, secant, tangent, sine, 3.14159, integral, radical, mu, D, V, slipstick, slide rule, M, I, T. Nice. <laughs> That's what, I had to well get done. that taken. Good job, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I um, hope that was recorded. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. I really do appreciate everything else you're doing. You're a caregiver, your family, and you're now giving to your Arlington family. So thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate the opportunity. Kevin. Mr. Chairman, I went to uh, Emerson College that uh, specialized in the communication arts. Yes. Could you translate what you just said, please? <laughs> <laughs> and I taught grad, grad level statistics, but still, I, anyhow, uh, I just want to thank you very much for your willingness to serve. Um, as I've often said, volunteers are the lifeblood of this community. We're glad to have you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Joe? As a former uh, Human Rights Commissioner myself and a former <coughs> chair, I, I just want to also thank you. I assure you that, that you won't, will not have to do that. <laughs> as far as, uh, but communication is in, incredibly important in, in, in uh, the role on the uh, Human Rights Commission. And uh, really glad to see the experience that you're bringing forward uh, Great. from your, uh, your, your other life, your professional life. So thank you. <coughs> All right, uh, not seeing any further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. five zero. Thank you very much. Great, Welcome. Thanks. All right, next up, item number four, utility poll working group. We have nominations, we have uh, applications nominations from Julie Benio, Robert Fredu, and Richard Horan. Are, are any of those three here tonight? Do you want to come on up to the microphone, all three? Or two or three? Yes. Watch out for the TV. Yeah, don't hit your head on the TV as you come on up. <laughs> yeah. That's the test, so, first uh, test. <laughs> thank you all for volunteering. If I could ask you each just to come up to the mic and just tell us briefly uh, why, the, why the committee introduced you, and then I'm sure we'll have a few questions uh, to, to ask you about. 
Hi, I'm Julie Benio, and I've only lived in Arlington for about 15 years, but since retiring from WGBH a couple of years ago, I've become more involved in community um, activities. I'm a on volunteer ombudsman at the Park Avenue Nursing Home, and um, I've really been interested in the utility pole working group in an odd sort of way, in that I think infrastructure is invisible when it <coughs> works well. And when it doesn't, as we saw over the past weekend, um, it becomes a major problem for all of us. And so I would like to help with, with this working committee to make sure that it continues to be invisible to the residents of Arlington. Thank you. Great. I'm Bob Perdue. I uh, moved here in 1980. Uh, I became interested in the polls when I moved a house through Arlington and had to move a lot of wires and <laughs> had to learn what all the, uh, the levels were and stuff. So. I'm very interested in it, and uh, I've been watching them ever since, and uh, I liked the uh, Arlington Advocate thing for a while where they were showing various polls, so I paid a lot of attention to that. Monica, you hear that part? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this guy? Uh, Dick Corrin. Um, I, lived, I grew up in Arlington. I moved to Woburn, and I moved back to Arlington about 22 years ago. Um, I volunteered for the uh, <clears throat> yeah. leaf blower committee. Yeah. <laughs> you have to make that noise before and, you say um, it. <laughs> and at that celebration, he volunteered for this committee. You remember that <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. I had a little fun there anyway. And uh, <laughs> I'm vaguely familiar with, you know, telephone. Uh, I spent 40 years there and all of it in what we call the Arlington Cambridge Construction District. So um, I thought I might have some knowledge of what is happening with them. So that's what Thank I volunteered. Diane, you and I'm oh. oh, sorry, Kevin. Oh, well, uh, just again, you three, thank you very much for your willingness to serve. Um, I know a couple of us have worked together before, and I look forward to working with you as well. So thank you very much for your willingness. Uh, so I move approval. Um, second, and I want to say, Bob Fredoux and Rosemary Schultz I have been longtime friends of mine also. Um, when they moved to Arlington, brand new, um, they got involved right away and have been ever since, including with Jason Russell and a few other projects. And Julie, when I saw all the WGBH experience, even though we're talking utility poles and all, this, all the other work that you've done, and I'm like, that's a lot of coordination. That's somebody who can multitask five, six things. Dick, uh, met you on the leaf blower committee meeting, and anyone who survived those, I think we need t-shirts or something um, <laughs> after that, but really got to know you very well, um, and you bring a lot to the leaf blower discussion, and certainly will to the utility polls with your 40 years experience, and I like how he puts down, I worked there for 40 years, the name's changed, but I didn't, so <laughs> I'm, I'm very familiar with that. And since you're all here as a captured audience, um, we have another piece of correspondence from Chief Jefferson, and I wanted to leave this with you all. Two points. I met with a utility company executive about a week, week and a half ago, talking about this very issue and, you know, how can we start chipping away at it. So what I'd like you all possibly to do, not to define your discussion, but um, there was the suggestion that pick a, pick a poll and pick a number. Coming in for one poll and Star Verizon, um, come up with a sheet of all the polls in the order of priority and say, we're going to do this, but we want you here and now tonight to commit to, you know, you're putting up one poll, these three polls. So, 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 I'll let you all figure that out. I, I was told we should use that, you know, we can't, we shouldn't really be denying service because people want that when they move into the town, but kind of told me some other cities and towns have been doing that. You know, it ticks away at it. It's not, it's, it's a little part of the answer, and then maybe the floodgate will open along with whatever else you all. Um, come up with. So I'm not saying that should be the answer, but I wanted to leave that as one. And then the second, um, I spoke to the town manager today, and um, I had spoken to a few people who were down the scene who weren't speaking officially, but, um, and I was on the perimeter. I did not go on the actual scene, because they're busy there. But afterwards, you know, the following night, next morning, I don't know if this is the case, and the town manager um, has provided some of the information, but if you all could also look into, and the town manager will continue to, I was told that one of the possible reasons, because we've had a microburst go through and all these other things, and I guess it was windy. I was meeting with Mr. Belskis, so I didn't even know anything was going on outside. I guess it was very windy. Um, and I don't know if the town manager can speak to this, but I don't think so. He provided us the information. Who owned the polls? 
And what I was told was that a lot of the polls on Mass Ave, I'm not saying this is the case, just people tell you things, um, when they built the foundation to put the pole in, and the poles are getting older, there's some lime in that foundation, and lime eats away at the poles, I'm told. So people were saying to me, so whatever way, whether it's through this utility pole committee and through the town manager, he did identify the chief was able to say who the actual owners of the poles were. And I don't know how we figure that out, um, if that <coughs> really is the case. You know, you know how you're talking to you know, guys in the street, and they say, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen again. And, and just on the case, so I just wanted to leave that on your plate, and I spoke to the town manager about it this morning. So I'm not saying that's the case, but I'd like to eliminate that. Joe? Thank you very much. Thank you for your uh, for volunteering, uh, for your service. We're really looking to you to help us do our job better. Um, just to step back, you know, you may be familiar with this. Some folks watching may not be uh, as familiar. Um, kind of the genesis of, of the working group, uh, and as, as I think we kind of conceived of it, um, there was a concerned citizen who brought forward a warrant article for town meeting this year um, because of um, uh, problems that he had been seeing around town with utility poles that were not uh, kept in, in, uh, in his view, in safe, safe water, um, double poles, but also others that were in unsafe conditions, um, had brought forward uh, a town meeting warrant article trying to get uh, town meeting to um, step forward to try to enforce um, uh, better maintenance of these. Um, if we could. Unfortunately, local municipalities don't have a lot of tools in their uh, tool chest. There's actually a hearing up at the State House on June 18th um, on a double poll bill to try to give local communities more tools. But we don't have a lot of formal tools right now. So one of the things that this board had discussed was if we had a working group of citizens who could help us um, put together an inventory of problem polls and problem locations, we could then ask the utilities on an annual or a semi-annual basis to come forward and actually respond to the list that you, that you put together and the, and the catalog of, of problems that you've, you've noted. Um, you know, my understanding is that when there's a, an imminent problem, like a, a very apparent safety uh, threat, that the utilities have generally been co cooperative, although we saw a failure, obviously, this last um, last weekend in the, in the windstorms. And we know that there's some others that are, um, that are out there um, that, that other residents have reported. But we're looking for your help in putting, helping us put together that inventory so that we do have a tool that we can give to the utilities on an annual or a semi-annual <coughs> basis here in public before the mic to respond, uh, respond to these and, and uh, hopefully get some results in that way. Um, it's a form of leverage, you know, lacking the formal legal tools. It's a form of <coughs> leverage, and that, that's why it's, it's so important um, what we're, we're looking for your assistance in doing. And really appreciate all the professional background that you bring to this and the background you've had in dealing with the utilities and, and, and moving these and communications, as Ms. Mullins said. Steve? No, I am. Um, <coughs> again, I appreciate your willingness to serve, and I like the makeup of the group. You all bring different, you know, expertise to it, and I look forward to working with you. I guess the question I have is um, I'd like to pose to my uh, fellow board members. Um, now, when we talked about appointments and reappointments last week, we decided that we would, you know, kind of address, you know, I'm not I'm sure if you followed the zoning board um, discussion about how we would kind of change up the process before. Um, you know, we had open up, you know, even when someone wanted to be reappointed, we chose to, you know, open up that discussion. And how do you, how, would we how are we going to move forward when these um you know positions are up are we going to you know just reappoint or are we going to open and vet other candidates i uh, i think it's only fair that we kind of you know speak to that while we have um our new volunteers here so my my answer would be is uh to my knowledge that process is set mostly by the chair mm -hmm. And um, I obviously won't be chair when that uh, when that uh, when they, the, their reappointments roll around. Uh, my expectation is that in, in my answer as chair is that by default, uh, reappointments should go onto the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. If um, a member of the board or myself thinks that we should uh, like doesn't want to put it on the consent agenda, i.e., you know, does not consent mm -hmm. and wants to propose a different process for a specific reappointment, I think we should evaluate it. Uh, like at that time. So, okay. uh, yeah. That was just curious. Thank you. And yeah. thank you again for your. Yeah.
volunteering. Uh, so uh, my th I think what we'll do for next steps is, so we've got two things to think about. One is with the selectman wrote a process and when we create, and we created this, or we wrote a goal and, a, um, and we created this committee. Uh, town meeting weighed in with some opinions on what they think the committee should do. And Marie, I'm going to impose upon you to schedule and post a meeting of the utility working group that we could schedule, you know, and uh, unless someone else is excited to do it, I will be delighted to join them and walk us through like that kickoff. And then we'll have our first meeting and work out some next steps on how to meet the goals of what the group is. And so um, we'll certainly in the next week or two, if, uh, if, you, if calendars permit, I'd love to have our first meeting. All right. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, appointments, Zoning Board of Appeals. And I put some notes that I, so I wouldn't forget everything on like that. Uh, so I just want to talk briefly about how I want to manage this item. Uh, first, I'm going to go, I'm going to explain my recommendation. Uh, let's bring up any candidates for questions from the boards. Let, then let's have a round of board discussion. If there's anyone in the public who's here at the meeting who wants to talk, I'm going to ask, uh, or, um, intend to let anyone who wants to talk to talk, but I'm going to ask that everyone keep it civil, um, keep it non-repetitive, and try to keep it short. I'm not, I am going to work with a kind of unofficial timer and move people along if uh, it goes along. Then we'll have a round of any final board discussions that people want to talk about in closing, and then we will, um, and, and then we'll uh, take a vote. Uh, does that process sound mm -hmm. reasonable to everyone? When, when do you want motions? Uh, Mr. Greeley, you seem very excited. No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, no. I, I, uh, I'm seriously asked however you want to run it, sir. Uh, you want to wait till all the discussion? I'd say let, let's bring the can um, either before or after the candidates. I'm open to either. I, I've got a record. So I've provided the board with a written recommendation. Um, I guess I think my answer is let's do it in the first round of discussion uh, right after we talk to the candidates. Okay. So, okay. Yep. Uh, so first off, I'm going to explain my recommendation. I recommended uh, Paul Malloy uh, and Roger Dupont to the ZBA. I interviewed five people last week. I was very happy with the quality of the candidates. I talked to a number of, of excellent people who could serve us uh, well in that, but I thought that they were uh, the, the best choice. Um, and I think that that's, uh, yeah, I think that, that, that I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So, I, Mr. DuPont, I said, you do you, you want to come on up and oh, well, talk to us briefly about uh, your experience and why you're interested in the board? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I, as I had explained when we met together initially, I moved to Arlington in 2000, and I now have an eighth grader and a fourth grader at Audison and at Brackett. And after I've become out of my depth as far as soccer coaching and baseball coaching goes, and I feel like I have a little bit more freedom, the kids are a little bit more independent now. And so I wanted to become involved in the town on a more sustained basis. And because I've been a practicing attorney since 1985, and much of my work has been done in real estate, I thought that this was probably the best fit for me and uh, the best way to help the town. Not to sound like a wonk, but I've always actually enjoyed real estate. But I like the law because I think real estate is unique. I mean, every home, every parcel. And so all of the attendant questions that might be raised about a particular uh, parcel with regard to the zoning law actually really appeals to me. So uh, that's essentially why I thought that it would be something I'd like to do. Questions from the board? I guess more so of a statement. Um, thank you for, as Mr. Greeley would say, your willingness to serve. I was really impressed with your brief outline um, that we received in terms of your legal background. And uh, I really think, I'm not saying it's a requirement, yeah. but one of the things that's helped me on the board is I'm not an attorney. I'm a court reporter. I'm not looking for any business. <laughs> um, but one of the things I think that's helped me um, run meetings and participate in meetings and show the respect as well as allow people to have their say is also similar to a few of our board meetings and I've been to ZBA and you cited in there you do recognize that some people come in and they're very passionate and there's a lot of emotions and it takes somebody who's really tempered um, who's representing the town um, to sometimes not take things personally and to try to keep everybody on track and, the, and knowing the law and I started out in land court many, many, many years ago. I'm now med mal, so I'm not soliciting for that. But I was really impressed with that feature of, of your background and expertise. 
Joe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. DuPont. Um, I don't know if Mr. DuPont remembers or, or not, but actually our paths crossed probably 16 or 17 years ago. Sure do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we want to hear this. <laughs> um, my, my wife worked for a mediation practice, and there were a number of mediator, trained mediators who were contracted, and I know that Mr. DuPont was one of the mediators who was brought in on those particularly difficult issues of uh, uh, division of assets. and. Actually, full disclosure, Mr. DuPont handled the closing of my home in 1997. And what you say actually rings true. We had, like so many lots in Arlington, we had issues with, it was old, on a private way. The town had started taking actions in 1928 that were not fully consummated. Um, and there were a lot of technical difficulties there that we had to do in describing the property and such. And I was very appreciative of uh, Mr. DuPont's patience and uh, uh, technical expertise there. Um, I didn't realize you had moved to Arlington. And I was, thr and I was, th and I was thrilled to, uh, to, to, to see the recommendation of the, of the chair. Um, it strikes me that your experience as a trained mediator is very relevant. Uh, zoning Board of Appeals hearings can obviously become rather contentious. There are generally right. um, a number of interests at play when something gets to the uh, ZBA. And I was wondering if you could speak a little bit to that and the relevance of... Okay. Uh, e uh, even before that, without <clears throat> trying to be uh, clever, I mean, I worked in the restaurant business for about 10 years. And as I said to Mr. Dunn when we met, I mean, I was always sort of steeped in that philosophy that the customer is always right. And, and so the way that I've always approached my law practice has been that you pay attention to the people who come to talk to you. And even the people who you're dealing with on the opposite side, I think you really have to listen to people. And I think that that's the skill that's most useful in law, in being a waiter, or in mediation. And in mediation, in particular, you are listening to two people who had opposite interests. And you are trying to reconcile those interests, help people reconcile. You didn't do it yourself. So I really think that that's the process. And in my experience with boards, zoning boards, uh, I've just found that I think that showing civility and respect to people who are before you, even if you're going to have to rule against what their request might be, is paramount because I think it's really critical that people come into that type of a setting and realize that at least they're getting a good fair hearing and that they're being treated the way that they want to be treated and that even if they walk out without getting what it was they were looking for they feel like the process actually worked it may not have worked in that particular way for them but so that's really what's at the heart of it I think it's listening and just being civil and respecting the people who come in before you Thank you. Are there questions? Yeah, yeah. One um, one thing that I think, or where I intend to work, you know, as closely with the ZBA um, in the next, you know, you know, the very near future, I guess, would be throughout the master planning committee, and uh, you know, that's something we're, you know, taking very seriously in town, and I think something that we're all looking forward to. And I, I was wondering if, you know, you might be able to. You know, say a few things about your thoughts on the master plan. If you've been involved in any in the past, if you've kind of seen what we've been doing in town the last you know few months, and how you think you might be able to add to that. I, I have to be honest with you. I haven't really seen it in depth, mm -hmm. so I really can't comment on it. Okay. But I would be, of course, happy to get up to speed on that and to work uh, with whoever was involved. Great, thank you. All right, oh, Mr. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your willingness to serve. You clearly okay. are an excellent applicant. Thank you very much. You're very welcome, thanks. And if I could just leave one last line and parting line, um, which I do think I gleaned from your um, mini resumes, mini CVA, I'll call it, is uh, definitely knowing the difference when writing a special permit and a variance. <laughs> and I know you, just from reading everything and the interface that you need to have, not only with the zoning board, your colleagues, but also the planning department. And I think some of the questions around um, Mr. Burns' master plan, which he's our liaison to that, um, if you should be appointed, that's something you may want to, you know, either Google or contact anyone up here, contact the planner, and kind of get up to speed on that, because that's where, that's where I can say you get a good ZBA member, which we do, when you know the difference not only between the variance and the special permit, but how to write which one and what needs to go I'd in there. I'd be happy to do that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Malloy. 
Mr. Dupont, you can take a seat. I think it'll probably be a... How you doing? Uh, same question. A little bit about yourself. Uh, you're, you've, you've been on the board for three years? Approximately three years. Um, my term expired and I'm up for reappointment. My name's Paul Malloy. Uh, I worked for Mass DOT for 22 plus years. Uh, engineering background, registered civil, instructional engineer. Uh, I work with the public pretty much every day. I'm District 4 up in Arlington. It's a construction engineer. So we used to work with the public. I enjoyed my term on the, on the board so far, so I've, I've applied for a reappointment, so. Questions from the board? Mrs. Mahan. First, I wanna say um, I wanna thank you for your service on the ZBA. You, cer certainly with the remarks up here, you've certainly conducted yourself that way and working for Mass DOT, <laughs> you're used to people coming up in your face. And you, not that that happens, I'm just saying. I've been to some ZBA meetings, they're fine, and then you get that one in a blue moon that everything just goes. And I do appreciate your service and I wanna make sure the remarks that we're stating is we wanna continue on with the Zoning Board of Appeals the way we have in the past. Sure. It's not that we're doing anything new or different because, um, you know, we, we hear from different people. I've always heard stellar um, remarks about your service, you know, when people take the time to do it. Um, always, you know, felt professional, felt heard. Um, so I want to thank you for your service pending your reappointment. <laughs> okay. yeah. Further questions? I just want to thank you for your service, too. I was just wondering, could you give us an example of maybe one of the toughest decisions you've had to take uh, as a member of the ZBA? I, I haven't had too many real controversial. I was telling mm -hmm. Deanne uh, the last three years, um, a couple, maybe with a, a guy with a shed that was on his property line. Um, and one of the neighbors didn't really want it. And he, yeah. was pretty, he was pretty adamant and he was upset when, when we voted for the, uh, for the petition. And how did you work through that? We, we, went through the process where typically we call them up and, and they get to present um, the situation. Yeah. And then we uh, reach out to the, um, to the people in the audience there if anyone supports it or, or objects to the, to the thing. And yeah. we listen to both sides and then we vote. Yeah. I thought it was fair, but uh, that, that was one instance. Uh, sure, hmm. great, thanks. Further questions? Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, so, f discussion or motions before we hear from the public? Mr. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I move to accept the, uh, the chair's uh, recommendations um, of uh, Roger DuPont and Paul Malloy for uh, terms on the Zoning Board of Appeals. To 24. Oh. But I need, I need direction from, from town council on, October the, on, 1st, on the uh, term. October 1st, 2015. October 1st, 2015. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion. A couple of things. Are the other candidates, were they invited to be here tonight to be questioned by us? Uh, I told them when it was, but I did not specifically invite them to attend. Uh, I said, I, I, the way I phrased it was the nominees, I, I said, you know, you have to be here. And the ones who I did not choose were notified, but I did not, I did not uh, put the same weight on the invitation. Okay. I'd like to start by apologizing to Mr. DuPont because I'm going to oppose his, um, his nomination and it's nothing personal. I think you are an excellent candidate and I think you're probably going to be appointed anyhow and if not, I'm sure there's, we will find a way to use someone of your quality. But uh, I'm pretty clear in open meetings what my position is here that we should reappoint the two members of this board who are up for reappointment. Um, individuals who volunteer for this community uh, and want to continue to volunteer for this community and have served it well, I believe, should be allowed to continue to. Uh, this is quite a controversial appointment. Mr. Malloy has recommended, so I certainly will be supporting him, but I also would support the reappointment of Mr. Tula Mary. I believe he's given more than 50 years of service to this community and I know there are those who don't like some of his decisions or perhaps at one point didn't like the way um, his style or whatever. But if you look at the record of this individual and the number of people who have come before us to speak for us, we have five letters before us tonight. One is against Mr. Tulemary's appointment, four of them are for Mr. Tulemary's appointment. 
And by not appointing him, we lose another member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Mr. Lucarelli has sent us a letter making it clear he will resign if Mr. Tulemary is not reappointed. I understand there are issues in Cambridge. I, I'm, and I appreciate the Chair has certainly uh, provided a lot of information to us. But in my opinion, those are issues in Cambridge that are being dealt with through the legal system, but nothing like that exists here in Arlington or the work that Mr. Tulemary has done for this town. So uh, to that end, my, I move that we reappoint both but it's probably too late. Mr. Kiro's motion obviously would be voted on first. I believe so, yes. Thank you. Mr. Byrne. Um, I echo Mr. Greeley's sentiments. Um, I do apologize to Mr. DuPont. I will not be supporting your appointment tonight. And um, I'm not going to support it because I do um, feel like Mr. Greeley feels that, you know, reappointments should be reappointed. I, um, believe, I do believe the system or our process was flawed, and I made that, I think, very clear at our last meeting. Um, and I, you know, just to open up an appointment process when we have a candidate that served diligently, so given, you know, quite a lot of his time. He's volunteered for many, many, many years in town. Um, that just wasn't right, in my opinion. Um, we, we, had, we had a real asset in Mr. Tulemary, someone that understood, um, you know, had a keen understanding of the history of Arlington. Um, he, you know, essentially helped to form the original zoning laws. That, um, that's something that cannot be replaced um, on this board. Um, and it, it just doesn't, this is not something that I'm um, comfortable with. And quite frankly, if I was a volunteer in town, one that we're a town that relies heavily upon volunteers, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel comfortable realizing that, you know, I could commit so much to the town and then have, you know, this kind of, you know, it was not a very, I wouldn't, don't want to say messy process, but I don't think it went incredibly smoothly. Um, I wouldn't want to be a part of that. And um, for those reasons, I would support Mr. Malloy's can uh, candidacy. I will not be supporting Mr. DuPont's. Thank you. Um, would, could I ask Mr. Oh, Mr. No, Carroll, do you want to split your motion? Um, since two of our colleagues are saying on Mr. Malloy. I'm happy Malloy. to split my motion. Okay, so we'll do them one at a time. I'm happy to split my motion. And okay. And I, I would just state, I, I understand that um, and recognize that the previous remarks, um, I know for me, reappointment doesn't guarantee you, just like me getting elected as a selectman, I have to run every three years. Um, and there have been very few times in Arlington's history where some have felt someone, I have a good friend of mine who's been a long, long, long term uh, town meeting member. She was on um, Fury on the Conservation Commission, and for conditions that happened at the time, um, perhaps her outspokenness or whatever, I won't go into that, she wasn't reappointed. Um, and I know it's a very painful process, and I understand um, I, it hasn't happened to me, thankfully, but I've seen it happen to someone that I worked with and, and have great respect for and um, really felt it was a big loss, although Arlington did go on a Conservation Commission and um, everybody else. But I do understand and um, respect Mr. Greeley and Mr. Burns' um, remarks about um, the current um, indiv individual that's serving on that it appears prior to our vote will not be reappointed, um, but I feel most comfortable with moving forward. You know, I want to thank Mr. Tumulary, if that be the case, if we have the votes um, for his service, and I do recognize that he's, he's done a lot, spent many years volunteering for Arlington, so if you're going to split the motions? Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I'm happy to split them, um, and I just split. want to speak just briefly Mr. Just, just briefly to it. Um, I don't want to belabor the point um, in supporting the chair. I mean, I supported the process of having the chair vet this. I support the chair's recommendations. Um, I don't take anything away from Mr. Tulemary's service. Um, honestly, I've had tangential uh, interaction with him through some processes in, in the town. Um, I think where I have to just respectfully have a difference of opinion with with mr. Greeley is just on my personal feeling about whether or not um, 
uh, events that have transpired in a neighboring jurisdiction are relevant or not. And in my decision making, they are relevant. And so that's, that, that's really what I base my, my uh, decision upon. Um, you know, we're charged with um, making these appointments. They have fiduciary responsibility. Um, and I, th I think that it is, in my view, when I make that decision, I, I consider it fair to, to look at, at um, other positions of public responsibility when, when I take that into account. Um, I'm debating whether I should let you go or whether I should talk next. Huh? <laughs> Whatever you think. Um, I'd like to give my comments if you don't, okay. before, yeah, I, of course. Uh, before I, I go around. Uh, so I, uh, I, I obviously considered Mr. Tulamary when I, when, we, when I did the first round of interviews. And uh, last week I met with all five candidates, including uh, Mr. Tulamary. And I do want to say that I didn't support his reappointment. Um, my decision to, it has nothing to do with stylistic reasons. And it has, um, and it is everything to do with ethical reasons. And I uh, also I share Mr. Burns' concern about what not reappointing someone does to volunteerism and what it does to this board also. But you know, because we're obviously in a very tense and uncomfortable situation about uh, this uh, decision. And I have worked. I'm sure I've made mistakes, but I've worked to, to make it as. Di as as clean and as not as messy as possible but we are at this point where we have nothing left to discuss except for whether or not we want to reappoint him and it comes down for me to this memo from his former employer in Cambridge where they believe that he had made a several errors in judgment that are ethical in nature and whether he was in Cambridge when he made those mistakes or whether he made those mistakes when he was in Arlington it's the same individual making those choices in both towns and I'm not comfortable reappointing someone with uh, who's, uh, those who would make those decisions. Uh, and so that is why I've chosen not to support Mr. Tulamary. Um, I regret every element of the discomfort and unpleasantness that is associated with this, but I have to, but I'm driven, but my, I'm willing to you know, step into this messiness simply because I think the town is better off if we, um, don't reappoint him. Mr. Byrne. Um, just to, you know, follow up on while there, I've certainly seen, you know, there were questions that were brought up. I haven't seen any, you know, I don't want to say real evidence, but I haven't seen any, you know, conclusive decision that the city of Cambridge has brought down upon Mr. Tulamary that, you know, he in fact did something legal and I would also say that there, while looking at, you know, what may have happened in Cambridge, there is also, you know, a town manager and a comptroller that would also be responsible for what took place there. And I do think that that should be brought up and put on, put into the record because that, um, you know, I don't think we should just start um, casting direct stones at this point. So I, would, I will respond to that explicitly because uh, the thing that I'm basing on is not hearsay and it's not a press article. I'm, his employer believes that he erred, mm -hmm. and they've said that on the record, and that's what I'm basing. Right? So, I mean, it, it is not like, you know, it hasn't gone to court, and mm -hmm. who knows, maybe it will, maybe it won't. But his, I, he, but his employer has made a statement, and Mr. Tulamary has failed to convince me that, that his employer is, his version of events is dra dramatically incorrect. Uh, Mr. Greeley. I would just like to add a couple of things. I mean, I, I don't blame you, Mr. Chairman, but what if in court it's ruled that he was not guilty of these things? However, yeah. I understand, and they, you know, but we're his employer here, and that's what I'm looking at, and I have not seen unethical behavior here, just but. It has been messy, but I want all of that messiness removed from the chairman and put on me. This, these appointments came up in October while I was chairman, and to be honest, as we all can feel in this room tonight, it was going to be pretty clear this was going to be a tough reappointment. Um, and so the decision we made openly was to ask for applicants for the job, and I really applaud the chairman. He interviewed all of them, including Mr. Tulamary. I think he did so very fairly, and I think he has come up with two excellent candidates. I just disagree. I believe Mr. Tulamary should be allowed to continue, but you deserve no blames here, sir. Thank you, Mr. Greeley, but I don't think you, uh, I, let's, 
It's a, I don't think there's any, we, don't, we need not blame anyone. Right, no, right. but right. people do think it's messy. We did right. back room, that's baloney. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. So I'm going to, uh, the board indulgence, I'm going to invite everyone from the audience who wishes to speak, then we'll, I'll invite anyone at the board who wishes to speak, and then we'll take a vote. One Let's suggestion, go. let's split it right now and ask people if they'd like to speak on Mr. Malloy, because I have a feeling the only comments we're going to hear are, are on Mr. Tulemer. I suspect you're right. Uh, do, you, do you want to just take the vote on the, Mr. Malloy? Well, I, if someone's here, I'd like to speak about him. Well, let's, let's just go through it. Uh, Mr. Sure, yeah, right. Okay. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak on this issue? Mr. Belskis, your hand was up first. So, Mr. Belskis, uh, just, uh, you're the first stop, and I'll indulge myself to repeat my comments from earlier, which is um, invite you to uh, be civil and be brief. Absolutely. I've never been any other way, if you I recall. Uh, I don't as the lone dissenting letter, uh, I thought maybe just a few words of why I provided that information to the board. I've had two occasions, probably the most difficult thing that a zoning board can deal with is a comprehensive permit. In this state, it happens to be a disaster. Uh, I've worked with over 200 towns in this state. You know, we've only got 352, so there aren't many that I haven't seen. And I've seen how the boards function. And I've participated in two zoning board hearings here in Arlington dealing with comprehensive permits. And the thing that kind of bothered me greatly was the way Mr. Tulumari carries the meeting and kind of favors the developer as opposed to the citizens participating. And it really bothered me when subsequently we found out that uh, despite input from citizens at the comprehensive hearing for Brattle Street, uh, the uh, permit was approved uh, with no reflection whatsoever on some of the information that was provided by citizens that in subsequent investigations by the state inspector general said, wait a minute, you violated many of the rules of the game as far as comprehensive permit. Now he shouldn't, you know, he's been in the business long enough. Though so I've had many state legislators in my conversations up on Beacon Hill say, comprehensive permits don't really belong with ZBA. ZBA deals with setbacks, area, type, style, color, whatever. Comprehensive permits really belong in the realm of planning boards. But, Mr. but, that Bell, isn't, we're not talking but about that's that not tonight. the way it's written, so we have to live with what it is. Uh, I'll tell you, many ZBAs are very supportive of what the town's position is as far as comprehensive permits. Uh, I just got done working with people in Woolman. Their ZBA turned down a comprehensive permit. Their board of counselors supported the decision, provided the funding to hire expertise legal people to go before the Housing Appeals Committee because they know it's going to go back before them. That's the kind of action I like to see out of a zoning board, and I don't get that sense here in Arlington. The second one was the Winter Street project which there again, uh, the attitude towards the people that were supplying input from their brothers, uh, they, it was treated lightly. If I hadn't brought up the fact that the, uh, the filer of the petition wasn't even incorporated in Massachusetts, which he should have recognized, and oh, by the way, early on, the meeting was kind of illegal because it wasn't published properly. I expect my zoning board chief to understand that the CMR changed a year before and he published it with the incorrect ZMR. He could have stopped the meeting and republished it, but he leaned in favor of the developer. So I guess my feeling is we need a kinder, gentler, and maybe someone that has the best interests of the town. We have potential of $700,000 missing in excess profits from the Brattle Street job. I don't know where that's gone, what's been done with it. Uh, the letters went to the board at the time. Uh, Mr. Tulliamari, uh, uh, Massachusetts Housing. Uh, but I haven't seen anything happen here in town. So I don't know what the consequences are. But if you'd like to find uh, somewhere in the order of $700,000 or something close to that, 
Those are the kind of things that bother me as a taxpayer and a resident here in Arlington. And I'll remain the dissenting vote. I think you can do better. The two individuals I heard here this evening, I think, represent a good opportunity. And if, the, if Mr. Lucarelli chooses to resign, I didn't put my name in for the ZBA job, I'll make myself available. At least I understand all the Chapter 40 and Chapter 40B implications. And I know backgrounds in zoning. I've appeared before the Cambridge Zoning Board. I sued the Cambridge Zoning Board. And the chairman of the Cambridge Zoning Board said, gee, why aren't you on this board? I said, because I don't live in Cambridge. So the vote is in your hands, folks. That's why I wrote the letter. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Melskis. You're the One of your the items, the $700,000, we're going to discuss it in um, correspondence received later tonight. Okay. Um, Mrs. Fiore, your hand was up next. Mrs. Fiore, you came and talked to us about this already, so I'm, sh I'm, I'm sure you're going to be brief. You don't really know that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hint. Uh, I, just, I decided that um, I would qualify myself, not for the job in the Zoning Board of Appeals, but I have been a town meeting member for 50 years, as you all know, and I'm much older than probably most of the people in this room. But uh, I have to run for re-election every three years. I'm a firm believer in the elective process. It was one of the reasons I supported that finance, you know, not having the uh, treasurer uh, on board and not elected. But so I'm going to give you my qualifications as a person. I'm not just Elsie Fury that people recognize going down the street. I did go to business school. I went to Hickok, Hickok Secretarial School. I got one of the eight honors out of 200 students. I finished the course in nine months instead of two years. After a while, I decided, and I had good jobs. I'm a certified legal assistant. I had good jobs in the biggest law firms in Boston. And um, then I decided I would like to die degreed. So I went to UMass. And I got a certificate in community planning. And uh, then I decided, well, maybe I should go to law school, which I did do for three semesters. Now, I haven't finished that. I've got to go down the road. I saw somebody 90 years old just got a law degree a little while ago. So I have just a few years left to finish that. But I want you to know that when I'm at town meeting, it isn't because I just want to sit there and just want to be reelected. It's because politics has been my life in Arlington. I love it here. I have a home in Quincy, our family home. I can leave and go there anytime I want. It's very comfortable. However, I like being here. And uh, so that's enough of that. You know I did speak against, uh, I was here before and spoke briefly. I forgot to bring all the papers from the Cambridge Chronicle this thick to tell all about the money matters that Mr. tomary has been involved in. And I'm just repeating what I said that night I was here. I think it would be a complete embarrassment to the town of Arlington, now that we know all of these things, to have him reappointed to the Zoning Board of, Art, uh, of um, Appeals. And uh, I think probably I've uh, said enough I work with the people in Cambridge. I belong to what's called the North Cambridge Stabilization Committee. It's like three streets down in North Cambridge. They're all concerned about that, uh, the area. I've, met, I've been down to city council meetings and spoken. As a matter of fact, if any of you drive as much as I do and go down to Fresh, the Fresh Pond area and see what a mess they've made with all the apartments and all the buildings and everything, they were speaking about it one night at a city council meeting I went to, and somebody said how wonderful it is when we now have all these stores. And so I spoke, and I identified myself as a resident of Arlington who is involved in politics. And I said, if you go down there, I said, you can't get out again. I said, the roads are just, just terrible because there is no way to turn here or there. Well, it didn't take very long before they've made some of them one way. 
I like to think that I had made an impression that night. So I feel very strongly, and I've known Mr. Tullamary for many, many years, not really personally as a person like that. I knew his father-in-law when he was the chairman of the redevelopment board, uh, when it was the planning department, because we, when it changed from planning department to redevelopment board, his uh, father-in-law only stayed on a couple of years. So I've been around a long time, but I really pay attention. I have the things that come to my house, I read every word. And uh, I would say that I would be very disappointed if Mr. Tom Mary is reappointed. Thank, Thank you. you. Mrs. Frank Lamont. Or as I know you, Mary Margaret. Hi. <laughs> I'm Mary Margaret, um, Finance Committee for 17 years and recently had the experience of going before the ZBA as an abutter. Um, I am appalled at the way the process worked. I'm appalled at the way the meetings were run. They were not run in any kind of order. They were not, um, there was nothing ethical about it. There was nothing considered about it. Um, and worst of all, at the very end of the meeting, the man threatened me. Now, when I went and talked to other people about this, you'd be surprised how many people had that same experience. I do not think this man is ethical. Whether you consider Cambridge or not, this man is not ethical. He, well, you read the letter that I sent to you, so I won't go through that again. But when I talk to other people about their experiences at the ZBA, they're very similar, but so many of them have been cowed or intimidated by Mr. Tulamieri that they won't come forward. And I think at the very least, those meetings have to be taped, no matter who is in charge of those meetings now. They have to be taped because it is amazing to me, not just in my situation, but the other two things that were going on there while, while the other two hearings, they have to be taped because I think the town is blissfully unaware of the way things are handled and the things that are said. And I can't say strongly enough how much I want those meetings taped so the public can see what's going on and that in no way could I recommend that Mr. Tulamieri be reinstated. It was appalling. Thanks. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to speak on this issue? Seeing none, anyone on the board? Any final comments? All right, I think we'll take a uh, vote first on Mr. Malloy. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? 5-0. On the appointment of Mr. DuPont. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Nay. Three to two. Again, with apologies, sir. I want to thank all of the applicants, um, and I want to particularly appreciate, uh, thank them for their forbearance and patience during what has been um, one of the more difficult appointment processes that I have ever been a part of. Mr. Greeley. Can I just ask who the other candidates were, just the names, if you don't mind? Sure. Um, Mr. Tulamary. Yep. Uh, Mr. Malloy. Mr. Mr. DuPont. Uh, Walt Fye. And, um, oh my God. Uh, Steve Reynolds, uh, Steve Reynolds would have come to me in a second. Okay. Thank you. Uh, because just um, uh, if what Mr. Lucarelli has threatened and we do have another appointment, that certainly should come from those other candidates, I think. I, I, I hope that Mr. Yeah. I hope he doesn't too. But me too. I do not want to lose him. All right. He's, yeah. I'm going to move on to item six unless there's any further discussion. All right. Uh, request outside furniture permit extension, Capitol Theater. Mr. Framing. So, Mr. Freeman, would you ask for an outdoor furniture permit? We gave you, was it a nine month one, basically, a, like a kind of a temporary one while we to evaluate it, and then we asked you to come back before July 1st? That is, that is correct. Before July 1st? That is correct. Well, what do you have to say? It seems like yesterday that I was standing here before you to uh, talk about this topic, uh, and the time has passed, and uh, summer is upon us. We've put the outdoor furniture, the three little bistro tables, and we've had, as you know, very summer-like weather, and they've been, uh, in, they've been used, and uh, the, our patrons have enjoyed them immensely. Um, and so we're here again requesting uh, an extension or 
no. something more permanent so that we don't have to take up your valuable time, the board's valuable time for a very uh, non-controversial issue, I presume. Uh, and uh, uh, the Capitol Creamery, which <coughs> is the ice cream parlor of the Capitol Theater, has become a very popular destination, as I'm sure many know. Uh, so we would like to see this continue. Ms. Greeley, uh, move approval, although I'm, I'm not sure if anybody else is here or any of the neighbors or anything to speak on this, but uh, I believe Mr. Frain is an outstanding uh, businessman in this town, and I haven't heard any complaints about it at all. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Brain, second. Uh, questions, discussion? Mr. Kiro. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I agree with Mr. M Mr. Uh, Greeley. You're an outstanding uh, businessman, and we uh, appreciate your presence there. I did, however, take up the chair's uh, invitation and uh, his exhortion to uh, go down and, and take a look over, over the weekend. Um, and now, try, usually, and try the ice cream, sir. Well, this is the thing. You see, uh, usually my kids they they complain. Like I say, you got to come along with me while I do some selectman's business. Uh, <laughs> Uh, where are we going today, Dad? We're going to inspect the ice cream store. <laughs> um, it was very good. Um, it was very good. Um, I did have a few observations, though. I, d I did want to note. Um, now, in, in the application packet you gave us, you, you show four tables mm -hmm. and chairs. When I went down yesterday, and I took a few pictures, but um, I think you had three tables and chairs out, as well as a sandwich board sign, which I don't recall. I don't recall being subject of the previous permit, but that's that's neither here nor there. Um, although it may be, we may have to make that part of the motion. Um, so there were only three out, and unfortunately, I hit it at a time when nobody was using the t the tables. I guess it was too hot, and everybody had taken refuge inside. I'm concerned about one of the table locations. And that's the one that's directly across from the, the bike rack. Yes. Okay. And when I went down, um, and my colleagues have s some pictures I took. I think we have some extras here. I think yeah. Ms. Do Pelka wanna, can. Mr. Freeman, do you want to grab? Oh, sorry. Somebody had uh, locked their bike to the, to the rack, and it had fallen down, and it was left unattended, so it was halfway across the sidewalk. The combination of that with, with the table made passage somewhat um, difficult potentially so that that was there was a concern on on, um, on on my part um and the other concern was that it was a very windy day yesterday and some of the tables actually blew over um so i would actually be happy to support a, a revised motion permitting three tables providing that one is not set up across from that bike rack but allowing the sandwich board to be displayed at that bike rack because people won't be there, you know, obstructing the, the passage there. But also requesting that uh, the table somehow be, be weighted so that they're not blowing into the, into the street. Um, um, and then subject to all other conditions um, there too. And uh, one of the conditions I, I just wanted to mention, and I, you, you may not have seen this yet, but the um, Board of Health uh, did um, give us feedback that there does have to be a no smoking sign placed on the outside there for the area. Okay. That's one of the health department's requirements for this. So when we say subject to all conditions, that's one of the conditions. Um, and I just have one question. I did notice you, you do have an alcove there where there used to be a door. It's, it's no longer used as a door. Is there a reason that one of the tables can't be pushed back into the alcove? Not really. Uh, I think on occasion a table was put there. Yeah. Um, as far as the bike rack is concerned. Oh, here's, here's a picture of one. Well, it's not in the alcove, but it is a little cramped there, but it could conceivably. I think we've had an occasion. Sometimes the customers will move a table themselves. Right. Um, as far yeah, as and that, so that's the, the thinking that, that it just a, you know, a weight tied to the bottom, if you just, you know, a chain with a, mm -hmm. with a light weight um, on the bottom would keep them from blowing over and would also probably uh, act as a deterrent to customers trying to move them around. Well, uh, the windy conditions aren't, are unusual. I mean, yesterday yeah. was, was 
branches were blowing off of trees and yeah, all sure, sorts of things. Sure. Havoc was. Uh, I, I suppose we could uh, put something to weigh the tables down when it's when it's windy, but usually that's. Yeah. I haven't seen that as being a problem. As far as the bike rack is concerned, I mean these bike racks were installed. I don't know to, according to what criteria they were just put down there on the street anywhere. Right. Um, I guess if the you know. I just want you I don't to understand. Want the town I support, to I support having the tables yeah. there, but that one particular location I have an issue with mm -hmm. passing through the bike rack, and especially when I I came, that blue one was down on its side. Now, did the wind blow it so over? The, do you think? Yeah, yeah, obviously the customer had yeah. gone off somewhere in the district, but it it. it if people had been there, it would have made passage a little bit more difficult at that choke point. And I think if you want the sandwich board sign, we could include that in the permit, I would think. Correct? And I, uh, I, No, says Mrs. No. Ms. Rice. No. That's, uh, that would be part of the zoning bylaw. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. So, sorry. Are you... Yeah, so so I, I'm I'm willing to vote for three t three tables, provided that one is not is not um, across Greeley. from the bike rack. Mr. Greeley, do you want to change your motion, or do you want to stick to your guns? I want to stick to my guns. Okay. Uh, as I'm looking at this picture, if this is the bike you're talking about that's tipped over, yeah, yeah, I I can't believe you think that isn't passable. I mean, I think two people could walk by there right mm -hmm. now if that's what you mean by a bike. Yeah. And his making him responsible for who's parking what bikes, where, how people are parking their bikes. Um, I don't know. I, if he wants four tables and there's room for them, I think you should have four tables. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Uh, Mrs. Mohan. Um, I'm going to be supporting, first, we have to vote on the first motion mm -hmm. by Mr. Greeley, but Mr. Carroll's recommendations. I went down, must have been similar time, there were two people there and there were bikes. Um, and I had that issue just saying, you know, can we just shift this table down a little bit so that we can keep that clear passageway? And you are not responsible for how people position their bikes and if mm. they fall over. But it is a condition that does exist. That was my only thing. As well as um, I'm a bit confused, and I think I don't want to state something I shouldn't, so I guess I'd ask town council or the town manager. In terms of I know when other applicants have come before us, blue ribbon, barbecue, and the like, and they've asked for outside furniture, I'm going to call this, we tell them they have to work through the planning department and the town of Arlington has certain pieces of outside furniture in terms of what they are, what they consist of, and how they are secured. Is my memory correct? I'm not familiar with this, I'm sorry. Oh. Well, well, I know when Blue Ribbon came in and requested, they said <coughs> you have to work with planning to make sure, you know, you have to help solve the dilemma of, I understand you don't control the wind and we don't control the wind, but the wind happens. Um, and we can't just say, you know, it, well, it was the wind. It's a condition we know that is happening and we need to address it. So um, I guess I would leave it to Mr. Freeman and the town manager or whoever you think is appropriate. But I'm pretty sure, I remember Alan McClennan coming up, unless the rules have changed, <coughs> he said to me, anybody who wants to put anything outside, you know, the planning department has a set of guidelines. Well, the planning department is one of the departmental sign-offs on his application, and, and, they, and, they, and they have approved this application. Okay, well, then I need to follow up on that, because maybe with the transitions of, um, G, not TPW, planning um, directors that somehow, you know, I want to see what the current planning director wants to do in that vein, because um, this, this is going years back when they come in. Um, and then um, in terms of the sandwich board, I think that's something, and again, I, I think it was the same thing. When you went through ZBA, there were certain requirements. It's illegal. It's against, okay. All right, then I'm not going to. Maybe it's when we allow the blood drive and the w League of Women Voters, we do give them a set of guidelines of how they have to secure it on the island. So I'm, the I must islands, be confusing yeah. that. So there's no sandwich report. Okay. Um, but I would... Um, after Mr. Grilly's motion being. Mr. Byrne. Um, <clears throat> this seems to be a theme tonight, but I'm going to be uh, supporting Kevin's agreement, um, Kevin's motion. I agree that we are uh, lucky to have Mr. Freeman as a business owner um, <clears throat> in town, especially, you know, the capital, as we talk about, you know, developing business districts, the capital is going to play, is and has, is and will continue to play a large role in, um, in that, you know, in East Arlington. Um, we, I'm happy uh, to support him and, you know, all the customers he serves. I, I, you know, I'm looking at this picture with the bike down and uh, I believe ADA requirements are three feet that you need. And um, 
I, that's certainly you know enough for people to pass through. So um, I appreciate all the work that uh, Mr. Raymond does for the town, and uh, I'm sure that there will be many customers this summer who will enjoy sitting outside. Um, Mr. Greeley has. Can I just ask a question, Mr. Freeman? Yep. Does it matter to you whether it's three or four tables? Do you really want the four? Is that well, important? Well, it gives us a little more flexibility, to, you know, depending on if the weather is really nice and people want to sit out there. If there is room for four. Okay. Um, I, I would I would just add that, um, you know, common sense would uh, require anybody. To, doesn't it doesn't have to be a theater with uh, uh, bistro tables. It could be your own house if it's a windy day. Uh, people should secure the, the tables. And, you know, I think that maybe we will take a closer look at that next time we see that it's going to be very windy. As far as the bicycle is concerned, I mean, uh, that doesn't happen that often. I mean, you took a picture when it did happen. Um, maybe a kid didn't park his bike correctly. Uh, I mean, anybody could just straighten it out, and there's... There's plenty of room here. So I don't know if we have to <coughs> micro-regulate regulate something on this Mr. Carroll, level. I, I, I want to I just be clear. I'm not suggesting all of this. I'm, I'm pointing out some issues that I saw. The only th thing that I'm suggesting as far as amending the motion is to go to three tables. And when I went down, I only saw three out. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that, the three, that, that, that third table, though, not be across from the bike, from the bike rack. So that's, I just want to be clear on that. Um, are there, is there anyone from the public who's here to talk about this particular issue? Seeing none. Um, I'm inclined to support Mr. Greeley's uh, original motion. Um, and I'm not, is there any, so it, it feels like we're ready for a vote unless there's some other creative alternative or compromise or innovative su suggestion. No, All right, so we have a motion from Mr. Greeley that was seconded by Mr. Byrne. Yep. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. No. Three to two. And can I just add to that, yeah. recognizing the vote of the board, if you could, I understand you're saying other people need to use common sense. I totally get that. But you're also the business owner and your employees. Um, I think the first burden falls upon you all. Um, in terms of, you know, you can, and I'm sure, I hope not, if somebody hurt themselves out there, you know, we have it on the record that we informed you that, yeah. our, you know, the wind hits it and it goes into a car, you um, would be liable for that. It wouldn't be, the, you know, a person who, you know, didn't sit in the chair right. Or put the uh, obviously, right. we want to have I a think situation. as a business owner, as, you'd want course. to address that. And I, uh, I really don't think, if you, maybe you still can do this with the four tables, try to position them so that you can leave some clearage there. Because mm -hmm. I went down on a different time and saw the bikes there. Uh, it's obviously not something that you have to do, but I would just ask you as a business owner, just since it was raised to you, and you say yourself that people pull it when there's a lot of bikes there and it gets tight. So if you could just, you know, in the spirit of the discussion, that's all. Of course. Which was three to two in favor of four tables. Uh, yeah, but I, um, I, I share uh, some of what Ms. Uh, much of what Ms. Mahan says, and that obviously we want people to be happy in the Capitol Square, and so I'm sure you'll demonstrate the flexibility necessary to make that work. Okay. Anything else? All right, all done. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Next up, Citizens Open Forum. Expected, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the Open Forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three-minute time limit to present a concern or request. Is there anyone here tonight who wishes to speak under Citizens Open Forum? Doesn't look like it. All right, next up. Item number eight, approval for the 15th Annual Feast of the East. Who do we have who's here to speak to that tonight? I'm Jan Witted from Artbeat and Capitol Square. Welcome. Thank Tell you. Tell us about all the exciting events. <laughs> um, Saturday, uh, June 15th, we've moved the time in the past. We've had it in the afternoon, but the festival started at 11. I'm going from 11 to 3 this year, which makes a nice lunchtime. Uh, lots of restaurants participating. Um, Lots of entertainment and activities. Uh, Trinity Baptist Church on the lawn, extending up to the Capitol Theater block. And um, we, uh, Cleveland Street from um, Mass Ave to back to Waldo is um, 
just closed off right there at Mass Ave so that we can have some entertainment there and seating. So we've got a motion. We need a motion to uh, for the traffic and parking changes that are requested. Move approval. Second. Are there any questions or comments? I want to remind everyone what day this is. June 15th? Saturday, June 15th from right. 11 to 3. Okay. I, I do have a question. Mr. Burr. Um, I'm sorry. I, maybe you said I just misheard. Did you say Mass Ave is going to remain open? Yes, it this? always is. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes, what we do is we widen the sidewalks, restrict parking for several blocks. Okay. Um, so that uh, there's more room, so that people well, can um, be on the sidewalk and the tents are put up right where the parking would be. Excellent. And, and we have uh, the public safety officers there at several crosswalks. Great. No, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. I would never close down Massa. <laughs> no. Yeah. Any further conversation? Only Marie does that. Yeah. Mr. Fiore, <laughs> this is a public hearing. Uh, I'm sorry. I wanted to give credit to my church that I've been going to for about 50 years, Trinity Baptist. I didn't hear it mentioned. All right. Okay. All right. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Five zero. Thank you. Look at Thank that. You. It can be. I was going to say that must have felt good to say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, uh, think this I will felt be like fine. I was back on my beginning days on the board. <laughs> Next up, Arlington Public Art Mural Project 2014, Adria Arch. Talk to us, Adria. <laughs> For, uh, first of all, I want to ask and if you, do you all have mm -hmm. this one and you also have the? Yes. Okay. In okay. color. Thank all you. I mean, never mind then. <laughs> um, well, so first of all, I just want to say that, you know, cheerful where you sit is coming up. Number two, so thank you all for giving us permission to do the first one last year, which was so successful that we funded this Pipeline Mural Project. And this year, we're raising money to do a new project, which is um, the Utility Box or Transformer Box Mural Project. So this is another fairly low cost and visible and uh, cooperatively done kind of a project that we think will, again, uh, set the tone for um, the community to start embracing public art and, and seeing how it can really um, beautify and enrich the daily life of everyone who lives in Arlington. So, um, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. So, on the left, we have current transformer boxes in Arlington, two of very attractive <laughs> ones that have had graffiti on them, and they're just, you know, kind of worn. And on the right are photographs from other towns that have done similar kinds of projects. This has been done in many other places, and so it's um, uh, often inspired by the, the surrounding businesses or events that happen around that area. Um, sometimes they're just beautiful designs, but so we plan to offer a competition to Arlington residents and people who work here as well. Um, to submit designs and with your permission and you know sort of making the right choices pick five to ten of these boxes that would be our first ones that we would do so we're asking <laughs> your permission to do that excellent Ms. Rice did you have a comment you wanted to make oh um, I think uh, there was a document that was circulated and um, you know, sort of an overview of how that process would work. I did have some initial comments on that, mostly clarification that I think it has been circulated to you. No, that oh, I'm sorry. It didn't make it into the agenda. No. I'm sorry. I can I can certainly provide it to you. Uh, uh, nothing or shattering, but some questions I had about how it would work, um, and I'd be certainly happy to work with Ms. Archer or. Um, would you consider it appropriate for us to approve it in principle and work out details later? Sure, that okay. would be fine. Um, Steve. Uh, thank you. I think this is uh, really cool, especially if you look at the pictures that were provided and how, you know, I guess awful they currently look. Um, and uh, one thing I really like, and uh, actually Ms. Howard pointed this out to me over the weekend, that there is an uh, anti-graffiti clear coat going on it, which is uh, yeah. pr pretty neat as well, and I, I really like the sound of that. I was... Um, curious if there was any process to um, address kind of the wear and tear of the boxes as you know a y say two years goes by and they you know deal with the winter if you know if there is any or if you know the town would be responsible for that well this 
clear coat anti-graffiti paint protects it and is UV resistant. So these are not permanent pieces. They just aren't. And you know, with a very small budget of volunteer fundraising, it's I you know I I don't know. I mean, I think this could be an ongoing project. I think that what what t does typically happen in other towns is that when things get too bad, they have another yeah, artist over. coming in and, and redo it, uh, you know, a d another design. Great. No, I'm so. going to support this. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Mahon. Um, could I ask as part of that process, and it may, uh, Attorney Rice may have already put it in there, um, but that before, um, depending on how the board votes, but it seems to be heading a certain way, before we um, paint over, provide good art to these transformer boxes, that we can check with the police department that I know in their ongoing investigation of tagging and the like, that um, they keep files on them. So before we paint them over, like there's one tagger d down there on the bottom. I, I'm so familiar with it, it's not even funny. Okay. So if we could just make sure that step is in there, that they, because sometimes, you know, the tagging's been there for a year and they have it, and it might be, it was a month ago. And um, so and if I could ask you all um, to, to make sure that's, I know the town will make sure that step is um, taken care of, but having been a high school coach down at the high school, I'm very familiar yeah. <laughs> with, you know, tagging and some of them, you know, express themselves that way. Um, but I do know we do keep a record of it so that when we do find the individual, we can work with them and mm -hmm. say, you know, here's everything you did. Let's work with us and maybe some of them avenue. Could, exactly. Some of them could actually be encouraged to submit a design. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Anyway, this is that kind of. But just before you do all that, but that's fine. Yeah. That's a quick check with the town manager, or town council. That's fine. Mr. Greeley, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I was but, just no. Go ahead. You want a, a quick response? Um, we what we could do is um, the APA could recommend the ones that we would like to do and come back to you and say these are the ones we want to do or right. yeah. really i don't want to get i don't want us to making art decisions right. no, no 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 i really don't which, just which transformer oh, do you mean box? Yeah. Do you mean boxes. boxes yeah oh, which boxes, boxes? Yeah. sure just yes. like information or do you want us to just no let's no. let's hear about which okay. boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah i thought you were asking us to choose which no, artists that's our that's us. <laughs> We've had enough controversy for this moment. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize for cutting you no, off. Right. Mr. Greeley. I just would like to know where I'm going to submit my particular design idea. Is paint by the number allowed on these uh, boxes? No, a couple of things. It's an excellent idea. Um, two things. Are you going to give them a theme like historical Arlington or the future or I don't know? Are you going to give them a theme or you're just it's totally wide open? What do you, whatever you want to paint on the box. The proposal that you all have was a draft, um, and it was drafted from another town, a couple of different towns that already wrote the thing. And so it was. So we we took that template, and um, I think we, I, I think the APA needs to sit down and discuss what exactly we we do really want to do. This was just an idea. So it could be all of those things it could be submit designs take a look at the transformer box that you are really interested in doing if it happens to be by the fire department then maybe your design you know just have a, a really a real interest in doing something historical for that piece or maybe it's by the dog park then it's something fun and and canine oriented so i don't know that that needs, needs to be worked right. out Right, life in Arlington. I mean, life but, in Arlington. but you know, two years from today, you might want a new theme out there because so that we refresh them or whatever. Right. The other thing I was wondering about: Are any of these near schools? And if they are, could we turn over the give the school the uh, opportunity for the kids well, uh, to design have a are. design project uh, uh, contest within the school, and then let the kids paint it. So, so here's the thing. Two of them are by uh, schools. One is across the street from Hardy School. I'm sure there are more. You know, I really only documented 11 of them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it took two hours. The other one is um, right by the high school. Right, right. I know exactly. And um, Dave Ardito is very interested in the high school do doing one. But our, our, our idea is that we really want this to be well done artwork and well executed it's really important these are big they're all of them about four feet by four feet i measured them or so and um it's a significant effort it's going to have to be done by somebody who really and that's some of the things that we're going to be looking at can this person actually carry it out you know can they take it to completion and do it well um so with the help of a teacher mentor yes and 
a teacher could submit on the behalf of her students in an elementary school? Sure, and we could certainly consider that. But all of them would be considered together. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Carroll. Thank, thank you. I'm very enthusiastic about this. I think, like, like Mr. Byrne, I, I was very impressed with the list of technical specifications for how to prepare the surfaces. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's been reviewed by DPW. Uh, has it? To ask the manager. Uh, oh, the DVW has reviewed and, and is still commenting. And it does. Yeah. Oh, okay. So commenting and making sure <coughs> that the access is still there. Yeah. But I also just want to say that um, I'm, I'm very pleased to see this so fast. I think, you know, we've been in contact about, there's been a lot of upset in the last month or two about, you know, one of the last big, right. you know, temporary public art pieces up in the Heights and how that, that unfortunately, um, you know, has been transformed. It's something else positive, but still um, something we've lost. So I'm very happy to see that we have something positive okay. to move forward with so quickly. Um, and uh, if it's in order, I would like to move to uh, approve this this concept in principle and uh, with our great expectations for um, the return of the Public Art Committee with some proposal for specific boxes um, and, and uh, specifics. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Mr. Byrne, any, or is there any further discussion? I want to see Mr. Greeley's paint by number. Uh, <laughs> all by the dog park, Mr. Greeley. <laughs> Did I mention I'm colorblind, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> and all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Great. Thank you. For that. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Oh, please, yep. And to make this happen, support chair floor where you sit. So we're looking to have 60 chairs for sale. Uh, for donation and that money will be used to give each artist a stipend and also pay for the paints and the clear coat st stuff for the Excellent. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, next up. Approval. Summer concert series June 19th and August 21st. Jennifer Tripp from the Arlington Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for your patience through our not so brief agenda this evening. <laughs> yeah. Really? I didn't even. Oh. Yeah. She did. The first We're period's missing. just ending right no, now. Uh, Were there any yeah. score yet? There are people on DVR. We don't want to be mean to them. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Don't say it. Don't say For us. <laughs> for us. <laughs> Hint, <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry for. Uh, do you have this? Uh, yes, we yes. do. Yes. Yes, we do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, You've got here is you got pictures of last the, year's event. That's the last concert back in 2005. Oh, not last year. Not last year. Yeah. So it's been a while. Um, so we're going to bring back the summer concerts. We're going to have two, one on June 19th, one on August 21st um, in front of the Jefferson Cutter House starting at 6.30. Um, the 19th is Karen Kay and the Jitterbugs, a kid's um, show. She's very popular. And then on uh, August 21st, we have Dave San Marco. So two local artists, and they'll probably Excellent. be on for about an hour, hour and a half um, in front of the Jefferson Cutter House. Excellent. Did and you say you have rain dates? Did I hear you say that? Uh, yeah, the next day. Okay. And if it rains the next day, we'll just. Sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce? Uh, and Leader Bank. Leader Bank. Yeah. Right. And we are going to have um, one or two food vendors um, available on the green selling food and we're going to work with the Board of Health for permitting for that. It's also right up to the farmer's market so hopefully people will come to the farmer's market and stay for the concert and, um, and stay in town and mm. shop and eat. I recognize Ms. Rice. Uh, thank you Damn. Mr. Chair. I, I noted that in the request there was a request to hang a banner. Yes. Um, that's probably something that would have to go before the ZBA as a sign permit, a temporary sign permit. Uh, okay. okay. I think uh, we'll have to check with my Michael, but I think that you can, she can get a temporary sign permit for 30 days, but $20. That's well, I need, $20. I need, I need 90 days. So I think <laughs> then that sounds request. like we're not going to take a vote on the sign portion of this, but we can take, we'll take a sign on the other, a vote right. on the other elements of it. Um, Mr. Creeley. Yes, I noticed that the uh, gig is open in July. Are you looking for? Like an open mic kind of performer? Uh, uh, no, we're we. Uh, I'm going to be on vacation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we think about the block party on July 13th. We just kind of spread them out. No, it's great. Yes, Thank we're going to start off slow. Okay. Next year we'll bring back soft more. opening. Yeah. Yes, yeah, soft opening. Mr. Carroll. Well, I would like to thank Ms. Tripp. She has also been helping with uh, some of the logistics around the 
I don't think live block party. And I, I think that some of the scheduling was specifically to book it to bookend that right. so that we yep. we do have things going on throughout the summer here in Arlington. Um, and while you're here, I would like to also just congratulate you on your recent uh, honor from the uh, Center for uh, Cancer Support, right? And education. And, and education. Thank you very much. Uh, you, Thank you. You do a lot of great work with um, Shoot for the Cures. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Tell me more. Um, every year I do a, a women's hockey fundraiser, the Shoot for the Cure. Oh, yeah. And um, oh. this year we raised $25,000. Yes. Well. And every year we give money to the Center for Cancer Support and Education, the Children's Room, and we sponsor Avon Walkers. And this week I'll be delivering three $1,000 scholarships to three graduating high school students in Arlington. Nice. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Try to get the money much. back. Yeah. Thank you very much. Do you have a motion? I move, move approval. approval. Uh, Mr. Greeley was a millisecond faster. Is there a <laughs> second? <laughs> second. <laughs> Mr. Curo. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Five zero. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. You. Go Bruins. Yes. Yes. Of course. All right. Um, we have a slew of correspondence received. Move uh, receipt. Second. Uh, one parking problem, two conversations related to Appleton Street, uh, four related to the Zebia chair, which we've already discussed, and uh, the one item is going to come back up right now, I'm sure, and uh, Broadway and Palmer Street. So I briefly emailed with Jeff Maxtudis of TAC, and he thought it was appropriate for TAC to hear both the Appleton and Broadway and Palmer. So, so moved, we refer to TAC. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And thank you for yeah, uh, moving off our last meeting with them. <laughs> Job well done. I think I got an email, but Jeff's reply was, were you expecting us to be there? And I'm like, no, I'm not expecting <laughs> you to be there. I just wanted you to know that we were going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, sorry. Yeah, about those uh, ones. Oh, no. Well, yeah, I will say the TAC considered uh, Appleton in January 2006, and we did mention that to them, but, you know, that just gives them more, but, yeah. TAC will okay. look at it, and if they've got stuff to add, they will. They'll be thorough. Uh, like, I guess next up is Bailey Road parking. Did, was there a specific disposition that made sense for that particular one? You want to refer to that one to the town manager for either uh, enforcement or signage update? Yeah, we'll, t well, I'll have the traffic enforcement unit take a look and make a recommendation. Thank you. Okay, that's good. So I'll move. Second. Second. All of those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Okay. Mrs. Mahan, did you want to talk about Mr. Yes, Velskis? I did, and I'm, I'm hoping what comes out of this is um, the town manager um, continues on along the road of where this goes. We did receive correspondence from Mr. Belskis, and he spoke about it um, when he was at the microphone about um, possibly the town recouping some money that it might be owed. And the way I understand um, the chronology, and I tried to provide some documentation to my colleagues by email, and, and you have it tonight. But basically, uh, back in October of 2005, from what I understand, going back within the history and the documents I have, um, a matter was brought um, forth regarding the uh, Brattle Street 40B, saying that it needs to be reviewed in the town as a result of this um, submission to the Inspector General. Um, it's could possibly to be due owed around seven hundred thousand dollars, and the points that were cited basically were that, and I'm not going to go into. I have a six-page document. I'll provide it to everybody. But basically, that the deed on the property, there was a claim that the uh, indicated on the property, the deed for the property was not as the applicant claimed. Um, the, uh, the claim of the 6,800 square feet, 24 percent of the site at the time, the claimant. Um, responded was overstated and then goes into the town's bylaw and then the claim size of the tot lot um, it the claim was it was overstated it was doubled it was 2800 when it was uh, 1200 then I understand that October 2005 um, a letter submission went and found its way and, and took you know first it went to Joe Tumulary and then it went to everybody else in town got to the inspector general who provided um, the executive director of mass housing on July 11 2008 basically saying if some of these things were true um, it's basically says in conclusion the appropriate land valuation development should be con sit seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars but that um, from what I understand the inspector general when he contacted mr. Gleason the executive director of mass housing said 
okay, town of Arlington, rectify this. Um, I am told that, and this is where I need the town manager, I am told that the planning to, that Mass HUD received a response from the town, and I know as a citizen activist, never, never as a member of the Board of Selectmen, because my first month on as a member of the board, I had a very unfortunate experience, so. Um, what I'm told is the, that um, the town, possibly through its planning department or the then ZBA chair, provided some sort of, um, they had to respond to the executive director of Mass HUD, and I haven't been able to get a copy of that or find that. So A, I'd like to ask the town manager, with my colleague's approval, that he follow up, you know, what became after the July 11, 2008. If we can, as Mr. Belska says, you know, go through the exercise, um, and again, this was me last minute research, I apologize. Other cities and towns that have pursued a similar process regarding 40B have been um, Town of Boxborough, they were awarded 1.8 million, Town of Braintree, 2.275 million, uh, Acton, 763. Currently, right now, the Town of Grafton is suing for 17 million plus 40 million and they're about to begin a trial. So what I'm saying is I'd like to at least go down the road if it's an appropriate road to go, because I feel like it's kind of been left hanging there. Um, find out if there was resolution of this. And if it is the case that we can recoup some monies, um, you know, the town manager can present all that back to the Board of Selectmen and with any recommendations on lack thereof. Um, and if we choose to proceed forward and it is, is some, an area that we can recoup money, I'd like to do that. So, so I'd I like to make a motion to direct the town manager, and I'll provide all this other correspondence to everybody else to kind of finish where this trail went and how we do this money. Is there a second? It, is it okay with the town manager? I'll, I'll do it w without a motion. I'll, I, I'll gladly look into it. I suspect that we're going to find that um, Adam's predecessor hunted it down to the end. I'm pretty sure of that, but yeah. But, but let's we'll, find that out. I will sure. tell. Couldn't get, yeah, I won't go on the record <laughs> yeah, yeah. with what I've been yeah. trying to get for this. <laughs> well, I was ready to second it, but I just want to make sure yeah. I'm clear on the language of the motion. I mean, if Mr. Chaplin's going to do it without a motion. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, if he's going to do it without a motion, that's fine. Well, he doesn't, let, I mean, I'm... I just wanted the board to be aware that I'm having these conversations yeah. and, you know, I don't want to be saying, you know, how come Mahan's directing somebody, yeah. that's all. Yeah. Uh, I, we, we've done several motions in a row where we referred something, we, including one. Do you want to make a motion to refer sure. to the town to manager? refer to town manager. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Okay. Uh, so I think we've disposed of everything that needs to be disposed of, but we still have three items that we should move receipt on, which Mr. Greeley did and Mrs. Mahan seconded early on. Is there anything else that we'd like to single out? All those in favor of, of the receipt of the remaining items, please say aye. 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 Thank you. All right, so just a reminder, to, um, I opened the meeting saying that we we're going to go into executive session. I think that, and we will, I expect, depending upon the vote of the board, that we'll come out of the executive session um, with a statement. So you know, I just want to remind people of that. But say, having said that, let's do new business. Mrs. Kropelka. Nothing except that I expect to see you all on Friday Yes. I'm sure Mr. Greeley is going to talk more about that. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Ms. Rice. Nothing new, Mr. Chair, thank you. Mr. Town Manager. I have no new business. Mr. Greeley. I hate to break the cycle here, but just what Marie was saying, we just still want to encourage people, um, the 100th anniversary of Town Hall celebration of the Town Hall and Gardens is Friday night. It starts at 5.30 with hors d'oeuvres in the garden, please God. Uh, and there is talk there might be rain in the forecast. We just want people to know it's still at 5.30 but we would hold the reception part of it up here in the selectmen's, uh, in this hallway really, and in the hearing room. And tickets are available through uh, Marie, they're available online um, through Patsy Kramer or at any of the leader bank branches throughout the town of Arlington. And we are giving a discount to town employees, any uh, volunteer to a committee uh, or board in the town of Arlington that consider town meeting members to be volunteers, for example, uh, and seniors, it's uh, $30 for the ticket, but uh, we would encourage as many people to participate as possible. If for no other reason than to come to see Mr. Kuro sing and Mr. Adam Chapdelaine do his version of Mac the Knife. Thank you, sir. Well, they're carrying the spelling bee gig a little far, but we'll, we'll go with it. <laughs> Mrs. Mahan. Uh, believe it or not, a lot of my new business actually got um, taken 
care of. So I just have two things. Um, first, where we opened the meeting, where the town manager reported on the three incidents, the fire, the spill, and the oh. pull. What? Mr. Byrne is also singing that night. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Excuse me. He was lip syncing. <laughs> well, I might be lip syncing, but that's okay. I'll still be there. I just thought there about it. There were three guys in the picture. No. The, guy, the guy has been to every rehearsal. He deserves credit. <laughs> sorry, Diane. Please. Returning to our regularly Return. scheduled new business. Um, I, I just want to, um, and I'll leave it to the town manager and the department heads and how proceed forward, but really proud of all of our employees, DPW. Police, fire, emergency, um, uh, the, uh, I'm blanking on that, not explorers, but the emergency. Emergency management? Man management. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the stellar job that they did, but I do want to let my colleagues know I've had a conversation with the town manager and with um, uh, the p police chief that when I called up Ho Officer Mike Hogan on the fire, and he was off duty, along with Captain Flynn's brother, um, who assisted with that. And then again, when Ho Officer Hogan was off duty on the spill, um, and said, you know, a lot of heroes in Arlington Town employees, he did point out that, you know, he was doing his job, but there were, th uh, on the day of the oil spill, heating oil, number two, that there were three um, witnesses, people right there on the street. He said it was like 100 degree weather, the truck is completely emptying. I have no idea why people kept driving through. Mm -hmm. So, and the, the uh, victim, the driver was in very poor condition. And he said three people stopped knowing that. And he said to me, it was the first time I was a little bit afraid doing my job. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not afraid running this, because he really thought that that tanker emptied so uh, much. And I guess the victim just kept saying number two heating oil. So everybody would know um, what it was, mm -hmm. but he said for them to stop and he said they were, you know, really, there was a lot of, of injury. So with that comes a lot of, he was saying, you know, go in here and get a pair of gloves. He did get the name of one individual, an Arlington resident on Water Street. Um, he didn't get the names of the other two, a Belmont town employee and another Arlington resident. So the police chief, because Officer Hogan um, and the rest of the officers on the scene were really impressed that these people stopped and stayed versus, you know, and that truck could have gone any minute. And people, if you see a truck overturned and oil's flowing out, don't drive over it. <laughs> it's like, that makes no sense to me. Um, so he wanted to make sure that those three people, um, and so um, Fred, Chief Ryan said he, he and the town manager um, would handle that part of it. And then my second piece of new business, which I think I've started to talk to the town manager about, and I don't know if we have an appointee liaison to the Bicycle Advisory Committee. Um, I wasn't able to do this today, but I will. I got a call from Rose Cazaza, who's the traffic supervisor down at Hardy School, and she was saying how it's really getting very dangerous down there. Um, she's wor working with Officer Corey Rateau, because people are just running, because, you know, that traffic, everybody, they want to go through. And then she had been told, and I've asked the town manager, and I'm going to try to call Phil Goff or Christopher Tonklin tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um, she was of the understanding that, and a couple other people in town said they heard that this might be happening, right at the corner of, I'm going to say it right, 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 Brooks and um, Lake, that there may be plans to put a bike rack right there. And um, do you know anything about this? Because I did speak there, there's to no, you. There's no finalized plans, but there are discussions about it. Okay. If you could, whoever the decision makers are on that, I mean, if you go down to that corner, I mean, it's cramped enough, and I want to say it has some sort of, I don't know if it's a transformer box or something else, if maybe we could move the bike rack closer down to the bike path where we have that little lot, or somewhere else, just not right on the corner where all the kids queue up and the carriages and the things like that. Um, she said, you know, she spoke to Officer Rateau who said, you know, I'll let him give his opinion, but he did indicate to her it wasn't him making the decision. He couldn't say either way. So I have asked the town manager to look into that. And I am going to call. I have a picture of Brooks and Lake. <laughs> <laughs> there is a transformer <laughs> box which will already, be beautifully so. transformed. Yeah, I definitely will be. Uh, Chris Hawkins definitely glad to ease their chair. Okay. I, I, I will make, I yeah. should have called them today. My day got away. But that's it. That's all yeah. I've been up to. <laughs> all right. Um, Mr. Carroll. Uh, no new business other than to note that, that also Ms. Fiore, who's still in the audience with us, will also be singing with us this Friday. So uh, maybe. One more plug. She might have a graduation. Oh. Well, in spirit. She's been at all the rehearsals. She's been at the rehearsals. She's, at the she's rehearsals. a true select tone. So. <laughs> Mr. Byrne, um, I have um, two things and one funny note about what's going to take place on Friday night. So as everyone knows, Adam's singing uh, Mac the Knife. 
And um, when I was talking to Adam, I'm like, you know, a little shows my age. I said, you know, I thought you were singing Return of the Mac <laughs> by Mark Morrison. Wow. It does show your age because I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. um, other than that, um, I, um, Ms. Mahon, uh, Ms. Krill, Ms. Krill and I attended a uh, special needs dinner and dance oh, on right. Friday night, and um, I saw one of the best renditions of an Elvis dance yes, I've yes. ever seen by um, Frank. I forget his. I can his, see him and I can I see his girlfriend. It. Yeah. Oh, Richard. Yep. And uh, but it was absolutely excellent. And um, also, I'd like to thank everyone who came out to the high school on Saturday at 12:30, which was obviously not an ideal to be sitting in a high school in cafeteria. A but um, over over 60 people attended the uh, master planning advisory meeting, wow. and um, wow. it was you know a very informed discussion. I. Um, I think a lot of good came out of it. There was a great lunch provided, and um, they're having two more this week. The dates I, um, are slipping my mind. June 5th in and the morning. The 3rd as well in the morning or at night? Today is the 3rd. Today is the Maybe 3rd. tomorrow and um, the 5th, but one is at um, Cambridge Savings, and the other is at Harvey School. Um, highly recommend um, anyone who can attend does. It was uh, a great discussion, and that is, uh, that's it for me. Okay. Uh, two items. Uh, first up is uh, we have a meeting scheduled for July 15th, and I'd ask the board to move it. Um, I propose July 22nd. Um, when we set the schedule, I had my vacations wrong. Is uh, are we okay making that move? So I probably will not be here, but. Okay. The meeting can go on without me. All right. I'll be on vacation. I believe, um, so in a look, for the, my, I, my next item was just to give people a, couple, a little bit of preview of some of the items that we have coming up on our, on our agenda. Because I've been, you know, you're going to tease me now summer. when I tell you, Cam, my Oh, you're going you're, you're gonna to cancel your vacation when you hear about what we're doing on July 22nd. <laughs> um, so J June 29th, we're going to do uh, our goal setting meeting, um, a special Saturday morning meeting. Uh, that, I, I, I'm sorry, June 17th is our upcoming one, and I suspect we're going to be setting the water rates, and um, the town manager is going to come forward with a memo, because you remember we have a consultant who's been working and so on and so forth. There's some, I've, I've seen it, I've been talking to them, there's some interesting proposals and changes, so that's our uh, coming up on our agenda for the 17th. Then June 29th is our goal setting meeting, and then this July 22nd meeting, we will be uh, doing a series of takings related to the Mass Ave Corridor project, which, which uh, how many times are we gonna have to sign our names? About 130. Are you oh, sure I'm you not wanna be miss it? Here. You're breaking my heart. Uh, and the other thing that I said in town meeting, um, and I, I think I said it also here, is uh, we have to revisit the uh, parking, uh, the overnight parking fee. I said that we would, we would at least discuss that. And I'm at least thinking about doing that at our next meeting on June 17th mm. uh, because I think it fits. Mm. So well, that sounds like fun. It does fit, though. So you can talk about we can do water rates <laughs> and overnight parking on the 17th. Okay. Mr. Greeley. So the takings, does that mean we have approval? Mm. It's, yeah. Can we take without doing a project? <laughs> We still anticipate final project approval by the time the, ta the takings will actually be effectuated. Good. Do you have that stamp with all our signatures, Murray? Thank you. Evidently, we can't use it on that. No, I, got, I got the look from our <laughs> town council. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, that was uh, that was it under new business. All right, so I'd um, like to oh, take a motion that Mick, or you have. I've got a okay. I've got a long-winded motion of it. The board Pass me the gavel if you're going to make it. I all just right. want to be legal, legit. It, actually, I can, never mind. Um, <laughs> we won't, we won't, yeah. I move that the board enter executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation because number one, holding this discussion in open session would have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the board and two, holding this discussion in open session would destroy the confidentiality of certain documents. I further move that the board reconvene in open session at the close of this executive session. In support of this motion, I state the matter to be discussed as the board's response to a communication from the Attorney General's Office in connection with an open meeting law complaint fire, filed by Christopher Loretti on or about May 3rd, 2013. 
This matter is not, and number two, this matter is not listed on the agenda for tonight's meeting because the, I could not reasonably have known about it at the time the meeting was posted. The correspondence was received by town council only this afternoon. Um, it is not recommended that we wait until our next meeting, June 17th, to discuss this correspondence because that is running up against the due date for the board's response. Is there a second? Second. Second. Um, Ms. Kropalka, roll call. Yes. 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 We are. Yeah, yeah, actually, one, but before, oh. all right, so, um, Cable question for you. Are, so we're we are going to come back into session to make an announcement. Are you going to go back live? or Are you going to take it down? Uh, I can do whatever you want to do. I think you should. To, you should say. I think you should put us to hold music or whatever. Yeah, I have, a, I have a slide that says uh, executive session feedback soon. I think that's appropriate. Okay, so all right. So I just, I just kill all the mics and then I just. Thank you. And then you guys can when you're done. So if you're waiting at home, um, in some time that I anticipate not being too much longer in the future. We'll come back, make a brief announcement, and then adjourn. We are in executive session.
Thank you, everybody. Welcome back. We are continuing the uh, public session of Monday, June 3rd, 2013. Uh, we've just come, I voted to come out of executive session. Uh, I recognize Mrs. Mahan. Um, yes, I'd like to make a motion that the Board of Selectmen authorizes town council to respond to the Attorney General's request. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, none. Five zero vote. Move to adjourn. If uh, oh, no, not just, I wanted to make one quick comment, if I may, to the millions watching at home. It is our tradition to go casual for the uh, Board of Selectmen meetings uh, from June through Labor Day. So, in case they were wondering why Mr. Chapdelaine is the only one in the full business uniform looking good tonight, but he refuses to be bullied. What can we say? <laughs> Hey, we have a bullying policy that we have to sign up on. No, 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 no that, that's coach. Sorry. Mrs. So, Mom, <laughs> do you move to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We are adjourned. <laughs>